Hello everybody, welcome to telescopes.net. My name is Daniel Mouncey, AKA Dr. D. And today we are going to discuss some of these really cool things from Explorer Scientific. I love Explorer Scientific because they are very supportive. They have a wonderful lifetime warranty on things. Their eyepieces are waterproof, man. I can go scuba diving with these things. I don't know what I'd go scuba diving for with them, but you can. Are we on right now? Yeah. Oh, you, sh you really? Yeah. Oh no. Okay, so check this out. I gotta tell you, this is like a candy table for me. Um, so let's talk. Okay, now first, I, I gotta tell you about these decorative boxes. I got the Skyless 2000, ladies and gentlemen. I actually started out with a Skyless 2000. It's got like 2,500 deep sky objects in it and some 80,000 stars or something like that. Nevertheless, it is such a cool atlas. I actually have uh, the original copy and the revised copy that came out and I use it from time to time, even to this day, because I'm still like old school. I like to lay maps out. So I really dig these um, decorative boxes that Explore Scientific uses. Now what we have inside here, I know this is a large box for a filter, but it's presentation, folks. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? And you even get a little certificate here that gives you light transmission report. I mean, how cool is that? So nevertheless, they're gonna have three different filters. They have the CLS, which is basically equivalent to your broadband. Then you have your UHC for ultra high contrast. And then you have your oxygen three, which is getting narrower and narrower. Now, there isn't necessarily one filter better than the other. Um, I would say the UHC is probably a good general all-purpose um, filter to use if you want to look at emission nebula. Take in mind that these things are designed to look at emission nebula. That means that when you see photographs of deep sky objects, it's those things that look red in the photographs, not the blue ones and not the white light things and, or stars or anything like that. This will always cut down your light from stars, typically but it will bring out the enhance the contrast, like things like the Lagoon Nebula or the Swan Nebula, these beautiful objects, and they are in two inch. And you can add these to your two inch barrel, say you have on a big two inch eyepiece, you just take the filter out and screw it onto the bottom and insert it into the diagonal. So that is a really cool thing that Explorer Scientific is dabbling into. They're two inch nebula filters. Very cool, folks. Let's put that box there. I just like the way that box looks. I gotta have it there. Let's talk about finders for a second, and we'll get back to, to more accessories. Now, this is a eight by 50 right angle finder. If you had a go-to telescope, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about finders so you understand what their purposes are. Um, don't take any uh, finder for granted. They all have some s sort of purpose. Now, you'll notice here I have the straight and I have the right angle. If you're gonna use magnifying finder like one of these on a telescope by itself with nothing else, I recommend a straight finder. And the way you find things is to look through it and open up your other eye. You always wanna look with two eyes. So what's happening is that, say you were looking at a bright star like Capella and Auriga, and I was looking at it with my naked eye with my left eye, I would be looking for two here of my right eye in here, and you'll see two stars. And when you merge them together, that means it's in your scope, which is really cool. The problem with the right angle finder, however, is that it's like, if I look to here, I don't know if what I'm seeing down here is what I'm seeing in here. It's kind of hard. You can't kind of look and do all this simultaneously. Look at the sky and look through the finder simultaneously. So the only way I recommend to use a right angle finder is an aid in conjunction with the fabulous and prolific Telrad finder. I mean, go to any star party and you will see these. They were developed in the 1970s by a guy named Steve Kufelt. And they are just incredible. They're uh, not very expensive, very inexpensive. And what you generally would do is complement a right angle finder with a tail ride finder. You have a dynamite combo. And what you do is you look through your tail ride finder to find your objects in the general location there. And then you look inside the right angle finder to see if there's something maybe faint and fuzzy off to the left or the right or wherever. And then center it and you're on your target. Boom, it'll be inside your eyepiece in your narrower field of view. Typically, you have an infinite field of view here, just like you have with your naked eye with the tail wrap, because it is presenting a bullseye onto a piece of glass. On here, we have a crosshair, so it's great to have some sort of finder scope on your telescope. You have to decide which kind you want to go with. If you're just going to go with an individual finder scope, I recommend the right, uh, you know, the straight through. And uh, the right angle is great to complement with something similar to the tail wrap, as we discussed. So that gets us out of the tail, uh, out of the uh, finder scope arena. Let's move on. Talk about something else that's really cool because we have so many fabulous toys before us. We have the Explore Scientific eyepieces. They are waterproof, argon purged. Apparently, the molecular structure or molecules inside the argon or the argon itself 
Those little molecules are a little bit bigger than their previous model, which was their nitrogen purge, ladies and gentlemen. So they are less likely to leak over the duration of a long period of time. You could even go scuba diving if you, if you wanted with them, I would imagine. They were dunking them in water and everything and drying them off. And Russ Tanton was doing that at Neef one time. I was pretty, um, I was impressed with that. Nevertheless, you don't have to worry about them fogging up inside. And sometimes if you're in humid climates, that can happen. I've seen it happen on several occasions throughout my career. Now, this is the 6.7. It offers an 82 degree apparent field, ladies and gentlemen. So that means when you look in there, you're like, Whoa. Now, our peripheral vision could pick up, say, roughly 180 or so degrees. So you have to imagine it like this. In an 82 degree, super wide or ultra wide, you have a field that looks kind of like this, an apparent field that looks like this. And in a super wide, which is about a 68 degree apparent field, it looks a little bit narrower like that. And then we have the mega colossal 100 degree, which is like this amazing 30 from Explorer Scientific. Personally, I think this is for somebody that's insecure. But that field of view gets out bigger and bigger like that. It's getting huge. So when you're looking in, it, it's like like that. So really cool. Now there's something really exciting I want to tell you about. And that is this cool new 92 degree apparent field Explore Scientific eyepiece, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 17 millimeter. There's also a 12 millimeter available so far. I have to tell you, when I first opened this, we opened this today, I was really blown away by this. I have never ever in my life seen an eyepiece with as much eye relief or a window this large. I mean, you have to buy like a 50 or 60 millimeter eyepiece that they made back in the days um, to get something like this. And you have nearly a 100 degree field in this thing. And when you look in here, I can actually see the edges. Even with my glasses on looking through this eyepiece, I can still see the edges. It's just so cool, this thing. And I'm just so excited about it. I have a feeling these are gonna be my favorite eyepieces in their entire line. So keep your eyes open on these bad boys. These things are beautiful. And you'll notice that tapered barrel right here. I take great pride in that. I suggested that to Scott Robertson. He actually took note of it and he actually applied it. That's one of the things I really dig about Scott. He's always looking for ways of improving things. He's receptive to those comments and feedback that he gets from his consumers and that's just the coolest thing. So you got your good eye relief in there. That's your nice two inch barrel. And uh, this is highly recommended eyepiece. I'm sure this is gonna be good. And most importantly, and this is something you guys gotta know, eyepieces are corrected different ways. And we have another video where we were, where we were discussing rectilinear distortion, angular magnification distortion, ladies and gentlemen. These are corrected for um, angular magnification distortion, which it basically means in layman terms that the stars and the edges are gonna be pretty darn sharp. And uh, they work beautifully in fast scopes, like these fast F4 daubs and whatnot. And they're gonna work wonderful in these long refractors that are available as well. So keep an eye on these uh, 92s in particular as well. So we have another eyepiece, the 14 millimeter, 100 degree eyepiece. This is a really cool eyepiece. And this is one of the first, this is actually, uh, the prototype was the one that uh, Scott Roberts and I used when they first brought it out to the field at my star party some several years ago. And I got to try to, the 14 millimeter prototype, which was really cool. I was so, felt so honored and privileged to be able to have my eyes through one of the first eyepieces that they had developed. So that is very cool. 14 millimeter, they have several different focal lines that you can choose from. The 68 degree, I want to talk about that. This is kind of a neat thing if you want to use a binocular viewer. A lot of people who are viewing uh, some people that want to view planets or the moon in particular will use these types of eyepieces, uh, 20 millimeter, 68 degree eyepieces, um, and they'll take two of them. So I have two here, two 20s, and I can mate these things together in a binocular viewer and look at the moon through them, and it's cool. It feels like you're looking through a, like a porthole in space, so it's a really nice thing. And um, they'll work with any binocular. You can use them individually by themselves. There's several focal lengths to choose from, whether you're using the 82 degree apparent field models or the 68s or the 100s. Um, the next thing and something else I want to talk about here that's really cool is the 40 millimeter two inch. Now this offers a 68 degree apparent field, ladies and gentlemen. This is the type of eyepiece you want to use with a long focal length Schmidt Cassegrain, say like an eight inch or particularly like a, you know, a 10 inch or you know, 11 or 14 inch, this is an ideal eyepiece to sweep the sky. Because the first thing that you discover when you use those big, long focal length scopes is that your, you know, your fields of view is the size of a postage stamp, at, you know, in the sky. So this is a highly recommended eyepiece for general observation. They have several 
different focal lengths that you can choose from, and the build quality is really beautiful on the Explorer Scientific eyepieces. We also have the 2X extender. How cool is that? So, how does that work? This is basically similar to a Barlow. It's just like a Barlow, but what's kind of neat about it, it tends to vignette uh, less than a conventional type Barlow will. And it's also corrected, so you're, everything looks a little bit more crisp across the entire field of view. The, the field of view is a little bit better illuminated, um, and you have a little bit more variety of eyepieces that you can play with. Not all eyepieces are compatible with Barlow's in the sense that they don't always offer a nice illuminated field. So this is going to help with that. It's beautifully made. It's got nice compression rings. All the uh, uh, accessories that you see here that have openings to allow the eyepieces to go in all have compression rings in them. So those are, that's a very nice feature. So the other thing that's really cool here that we have is the uh, field flattener. Look at this little cool. This thing is fantastic. It's just a tiny little thing. And what you do is you can screw your Nikon T-ring or your Canon T-ring on here. Typical cameras, SLR cameras, popular today. I gotta move the big 30 millimeter out of the way because it blocks our view. And then what you do is you take this thing like so and you just insert it in there with your camera. Oops, I gotta loosen this screw here so this will let me put this in. And then tighten the screw and you're good to go. Put your camera on there and you're ready to rock. You can take your astro images with this thing. This here is the 127 Essential Series Telescope. And I will tell you, I actually did an ad campaign for uh, Explore Scientific with Sky and Telescope magazine. I took great pride in uh, using this telescope when it first came out. So um, it's incredibly low price for a ED triplet refractor. I mean, there's nothing on the market uh, that will compete in the price range. There's just nothing. And um, it's just wonderful. It's really a great way to get people into, you know, color corrected images at a low cost. And a five inch aperture, folks. They have several different apertures to choose from. So you'll get more information on that if you watch more of our videos. Let's just push this over here. We now, I will tell you about the diagonals here. We have the 99% reflective dielectric diagonal, ladies and gentlemen. The carbon fiber housing looks really cool. We have the compression ring and two inch, inch and a quarter adapter with 48 millimeter threads if you want to screw, say, a two inch filter in there. You sometimes have to be very careful if you put this uh, eyepiece in there that you don't touch your uh, filters, but uh, sometimes you can do it without touching them and you're perfectly fine. The other diagonal we have here is the super mega three inch diagonal, dielectric, ladies and gentlemen. Check out this cool carbon fiber housing, serial number. It's got a three inch barrel with these cool platinum compression rings. They look like platinum. That's what John Schwartz would say. They are platinum, Daniel. The compression rings are platinum. So I look at that, look at that. And then we got this super colossal eyepiece. Ugh. Ugh. Nestle that in there, good heavens. Look at that, explore scientific and that colossal diagonal. Look at this little trivial little diagonal by comparison. There's no contest, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, check that out. It'd be cool if we could switch this diagonal out. Look at that. We have a backwards L there. That would be pretty hilarious. Imagine an eyepiece that's bigger than a telescope. I mean, how funny is that? What's neat about this, though, is this three inch to two inch adapter, it's so weird saying that in this hobby, you never say that. You always say two inch to inch and a quarter adapter, not three inch to two inch adapter, but that's what this is. And I insert that, and notice the bar barrels are tapered, so drop that in there. You can then insert your two inch, inch and a quarter adapter, so now you have the option to use inch and a quarter eyepieces like this, or you can take this out and use two inch eyepieces like this. Is that cool or what? Or if you wanna go and use the mega three inch eyepiece, 30 millimeter Explorer, you can just drop that bad boy in there. Look at that, isn't that cool? God, man, I can even use this for a mirror like I'm, you know, looking at myself or something. Well, wait a minute, I can't see myself in there. Hey, look at this, man. It's like a, uh, it's like a scope for a, like a, uh, you know, like a submarine or something. You could use it for that, you know? And you know, the customer service at Explore, I'm sorry to say, blows everybody away. I better be careful how I say that. There's other companies that are trying. But I have to tell you, the Explore Scientific's customer service is really good. They're good people. Um, I really enjoy working with them. They just make everything so easy. We got Greg Bragg. He's just like the awesome sales manager for Explore Scientific, and he's doing some videos of his own. They're not as good as mine, though. Look, if you've got any more questions on Explore Scientific, just visit our website at telescopes.net, or you can call our toll-free number at 888-47... Wait a minute. 
For more details, ladies and gentlemen, visit our website at telescopes.net. Or you can call our toll-free number at 888-427-8766. Dr. D, out.